Hello everyone, Dan here, Sure PT. I almost forgot about you. I actually have taken out some of the bolts already, um, but I'll continue on. Just as a reminder, so the last time that I was out, I took some people out on some ice that I broke up the previous day. And long story short is I broke this bead on the inside of this tire. So I've got to pull off the Sherp tire, um, basically squirt some sealant around the outside of it and put it all back together again and pop it on. So you can join me in this little task that I have to do. Uh, there is all the tools actually in the Sherp, I think, to do this. Um, I'm certainly not going to do it the hard way. I'm going to do it with the easy way with an impact wrench, but uh, apparently you're supposed to be able to do this in the field. I guess we'll talk about that as I'm going along. So this happened to me one other time, too. And I was fortunate enough the first time to have it done under warranty. Mark popped down and... Uh, did it and I was lucky enough to see him do that so I have a little bit of an idea about what I'm about to do uh, there could be water that comes out when we pull this gasket off uh, I'm not sure how to do that don't get my hands clean I'll be back in just a second looks like the perfect tool my super screwdriver is that tank right here that we've been talking about that you can put diesel fuel in and pump it out back into the tank and you fill it up right here and this is where you pump it out too. So what I'm going to do here is put on a little bit of Uncle Bob's magic juice. Leave this sit for a while. Well unfortunately due to time Due to my mechanical abilities, I was not able to get those darn lug nuts off. I tried to use a half-inch impact wrench, but unfortunately I used two extensions, and I think that's what did it. I couldn't get those things to move at all. Ended up calling Pomp's Tires 150 bucks later, five minutes of work for them. They got the things zipped off. Lesson learned is never use an, an extension with an impact wrench. All right, so take this ring off again. So you just take out all these bolts all the way around it. And then just pull the ring off. I actually did take that ring off a little bit earlier. Um, I just did this for simplistic sake uh, videotaping. So if you can look right here, what there is is there's gasket sealer that I'm going to put right on the inside of this. So what I did is all I did was just came over and took a putty knife. And I went all the way around and I just scraped that out. You can kind of see some of the crap that's sitting there. Honestly, I'm absolutely shocked at the limited amount that they used. I will be using more. So, what you use is Ultra Black Gasket Maker. Um, you just squirt it in there and put it on that little bead spot. make it go all the way around. We're not doing a very good job here. We're gonna hold this differently after we're done videotaping. We got all the caulk applied and it is oozing out a little bit which is exactly what we want to do. I did almost use a whole tube on one side. It was suggested that I could have been only used half of the tube um, but that's not the way to do it. So it is what it is. Then you just place this ring right where the holes are. Each one does have a washer on it, so make sure you don't lose that. Don't see my damn hole. It's right there. All of them 
are torqued to 30 foot-pounds of torque. And when you do that, you go in a circle. You don't do it like a traditional uh, tightening type thing. So just go in a circle and whoop, you're done. See how much these weigh. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I certainly am not a strong person. I'm old and decrepit and that type of thing. But all you have to do is just tilt her up and she will roll just fine. And what I'm going to do here, it's just a quick reminder. So this right here, this tube is what actually fills the rim or the tire with the air. So if you go around here to the other side, right here there's a gasket that goes around the inside and I will show you on the shirt before I put it back on again. I'm just going to put a little bit of grease around the outside to lubricate that because we don't want it to leak right here too. Um, when you put these actually six lug nut bolts on here, they're supposed to be torqued down to 300 foot pounds, which is an insane amount. So I did this the other day with my son who was helping me again today, but we did put this inner ring on. So hopefully that's going to be all good. And that's the one that was actually a problem, but we're going to do both of them to get it all done. That's just my game. I'll just put the tire in both there and put it into the shirt. I just had it in there before because the weather was a lot, a lot colder. Today it's supposed to get warm. It's going to be in the like, mid 40s, I think, or upper or lower 40s. zip over to this side, put some grease right on that gasket. how hard it is to get this baby lined up. I don't think it's going to be that bad. Like with everything, it's finesse. It's not necessarily brute strength. While I'm going right now, if you look down there in the bottom underneath the Sherp, what I do is if I have to just lift it up in the air, is I just put a big log underneath it with a 2x4 and that's what's supporting it. I do have a farmer jack here, I just had that set up just in case as a backup. Or if I have to do a little bit of alignment when I get this bugger in here. I didn't quite capture us getting that on there, but the two of us together were able to just turn it a little bit and popped it right on. These are stinking fine threaded and they're a pain in the butt to get on. I tried to make sure that I put them on there good before. I'm not going to bore you with all putting all these on here. the torque wrench for the remaining nuts and then after this and unfortunately the video recording did not work we had uh, about a two foot extension that was put on this along with the three quarter inch drive 
with a 10 foot pipe on it and then we torqued it down to 300 or we got pretty darn close. Good. So what we're trying to do here is we got to take this rubber old gasket off. You can see it right here. There's not really a heck of a lot of material there, but I'm just going to scrape that all off with the putty knife. And next step what we're going to do is we're going to put on some uh, new gasket sealant. And I'll be back in a sec. All right, so now all we got to do then is put a bead of caulk. Actually, again, the Ultra Black Permatex 6000 gasket maker oil resistant stuff all the way around. There's two gaskets on it. There's a little small spot in each one of them. We just plot that on the inside here again. And again, this diesel tank, it's not just for, you know, flotation because it's all sealed and everything like that. Um, it also keeps all the crap out of the inside of here. Uh, so you don't get snow and ice and everything else on there and make a big mess. So we'll leave that right there. I don't think it's pushed in or not. You just hold that as I'm doing, or grab that ring behind you. Hand that to me if you would. Oops, thank you, sir. I don't remember where I put the bolts. Behind you. I'm sure this is going to be a pain in the ass, but we'll see. Let's be hopeful. or foot pounds of pressure so when this whole thing started if I don't know if I said this or not but my darn torque wrench that I've had for years that I actually used for a 1935 model H on deer tractor was busted and I do not remember busting it the last time I used it I just want to make sure all these are started good what you have to do is you torque one down and then go to the next one all the way around. But let's just make sure that she's all snugged up first. Huh. That seems like more than 30 PS. That's more than 30, I think. Huh? I think that's more than 30. <laughs> We're close, but we have So because it's squishing everything together, you got to really make sure that you torque it right. Because there's a lot of stuff that's squishing right now. We got that gas tank in there. There's two gaskets on that, or the fuel tank. We got that sealer. Well, overall, this project was successful. I did get the air put back in the tires. It did hold air, as you will see. When I did go out for a spin in the backyard, however, it made a cunking noise that scared the daylights out of me. Come to find out that the driver's side front sprocket idler wheel, the thing that you use to tighten the chain, had broken. So I now have another project. It is what it is. Take care. 
So we got the annoying buzzer going off right now. There's almost 60 PSI of pressure. I'm guessing that you can start to see the tires fill up a little bit. I can feel it going up. So pretty soon it should be going right off of that block in the middle. You could probably see that. Is it off of there yet? Not the one on the right, not the one on the left. Yeah, there are, this side is off, this side is, I would just move it before you go back. <laughs> 